We are focusing on exponential and logarithmic equations. We've actually worked all the way through exponential equations, and so now we're going to move on to logarithmic equations. And I'm going to convince you that you actually already know how to solve some basic examples of logarithmic equations. And so let's do that by just looking at our first example. We have log base 3 of x is equal to negative 2. And so if we want to figure out what x is, then all we need to do is convert this from logarithmic form into exponential form, which we've done numerous times before. And so if I were to put this in exponential form, this would give me 3 to the negative 2 is equal to x. And so that's as easy as it comes. All I need to do now is simplify 3 to the negative 2. That's the same thing as 1 over 3 squared, and that's the same thing as 1 over 9. And so our answer is x equals 1 ninth. If you don't trust yourself, you can always plug it back in, do your change of base formula, and type it in your calculator. Or you can do a graphing utility where you graph this one on one equation, this one on another equation, and figure out their point of intersection. But this is basically what you need to know to solve logarithmic equations. So let's look at some more examples. These ones are a little bit more difficult, but the steps are isolate your log function and then convert it into an exponential equation. So I suggest that you pause the video and see what answers you get when you work these problems on your own. Okay, so on the last one, I need to isolate my log function and so I do that by dividing both sides of my equation by 8. That leaves me with log base 4 of w plus 6 is equal to 3. Now, converting it into exponential notation, this gives me 4 to the third power is equal to w plus 6. And so if I were to subtract 6 from both sides, that would isolate my w variable. So 4 to the third is 64. 64 minus 6 is equivalent to 58. And so the solution to this equation is W equals 58. So my second example here, exact same thing, except for notice it does not have a base. So it is assumed to be your common logarithm of base 10. And so if I convert this into exponential notation, this gives me 10 to the 2.6 is equal to Z plus 47. So to isolate my z, all I need to do is subtract 47. So z is equal to 10 to the 2.6 minus 47, or if I were to approximate that, 10 to the 2.6 minus 47. And so my solution is 351.107. And so again, here's my exact up top or my approximate down below. And so just to emphasize one more time, to solve logarithmic equations, just convert it into exponential format after you've isolated the log function. Let's look at some more variations of this. These definitely look more intense, but I promise there are only a couple more steps than the last ones, and it's already information that you know how to do. So we see in my first example here that I have log base 2 of x on the left-hand side, and I have log base 2 of x on the right-hand side. Well, let's figure out what would happen if I put them on the same side. So let me put all of my logs on the same side, and I'm going to keep my constants on the other side. So log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x minus 2, and that is equivalent to 3. Well, hopefully you're starting to realize that, hey, I can simplify this. If we have log functions with the same base that are added, then I can use my product property and put these in the same log function. So this is log base 2 of x times x minus 2. And that is still equivalent to 3. 
Now I can very easily convert that into my exponential format. This gives me 2 to the 3 is equal to x squared minus 2x. And I get that by distributing this here. Now this is a quadratic equation, so all I need to do is set it equal to 0 and solve it by factoring or quadratic formula. So x squared minus 2x, and then if I were to move this to the other side, that would give me negative 8. And so let me try and factor this. x minus 4, x plus 2. And so that would give me the solutions of x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 2. Now we would love to say that we are finished with this problem, but unfortunately, since the logarithms are only defined for positive values, we need to double check and make sure that both of these answers work. So you must check these to make sure that I can even substitute these answers into my original equation. So let me do my check up here. Let's start with x equals 4. Log base 2 of 4. Is that equal to 3 minus log base 2 of 4 minus 2, which is 2? Now, if I treated each of these logs as a question, remember that's how I first posed it to you, 2 to what power is equal to 4? Well, that's 2. 3 minus 2 to what power is equal to 2? Or you can think about your bases canceling out, and so that gives me 1. And so my x equals 4, that solution checks out. Let me check the other solution down here. And so this is log base 2 of negative 2. Is that equal to 3 minus log base 2 of negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4? We know that this, in fact, does not check out because I cannot even do log of a negative number. So neither one of these actually checks. So this one is not a solution. So we only have one solution to this problem. All right, let's see what happens over here in example four. I have natural log of all of these things, so let me put them all together on one side of the equation. That gives me natural log of x minus four minus natural log of x plus six plus natural log of x. Well, if I use my product and my quotient rule property, I know since these are all natural logs of base e, I can change my subtraction into a quotient, and I can change my addition into a multiplication. So everything that's addition is going to go in the numerator, and everything that's subtraction is going to go in the denominator. So this is the same thing as the natural log of x times x minus 4 over x plus 6. So again, this one was positive, so I put it in the numerator. This one was positive, so I put it in the numerator. And this one was negative, so I put it in the denominator. And that is equivalent to 0. And so now if I convert this from logarithmic format into exponential format, I have base e, so that tells me I have e to the 0 power is equal to x times x minus 4 over x plus 6. This one's going to be really easy to simplify because I know anything to the 0 power is in fact 1. So if I solve this one by using my magic trick, I can multiply both sides by x plus 6, which cancels that out. And so when I have it over here on the left, I have x plus 6 is equal to, if I distribute this, x squared minus 4x. Now, I've deduced it down to a quadratic equation. And so, let me put everything on the same side. So this gives me 0 is equal to x squared minus 5x minus 6. If I were to factor this, x minus 6, x plus 1 gives me the solution of x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. Well, if I check my solutions, I know automatically that x equals negative 1 is not a solution because I cannot plug it into a natural log. Let me check x equals 6. So I have natural log of 6 minus 4 is 2. Natural log of 6 plus 6 is 12. Minus natural log of 
Well, if I convert this using my properties, that's the same thing as natural log of 12 divided by 6, or natural log of 2. And so, of course, this one checks out. And so, of course, we have the solution of x equals 6. So in this video, every single one of these examples of solving logarithmic equations is done by using the properties that we've learned in previous sections. And so we're just utilizing information that we already know.